Um, Mr. Atha, um, you put out the memo, or the memo came out about the library's closing. I'd first like to speak to Catalina. I've got your gay count for, I, I assume it's one month ago, January 15th, January 2015. And it shows that the, as you know, Catalina is a very small community, 7,932 people. The gate count was about 54% utilization from the residents in that neighborhood. I understand they're a small community, but they're also a very poor community. They are, they rely on this library, and when you have that percentage utilization of that community, how can you justify closing it for one of the most needy communities? These young kids out there that don't have access to computers, they go to the library to use computers, whereas kids in other schools have uh, the access to the computers. And that yeah, one to me, I have a real problem with uh, closing that one when it is, the utilization is way up in terms of the community. You're not gonna have people driving from out of Oral Valley or anything going up to the library. But 54.4% seems significant. And why was this library targeted for closure, just specifically? Madam Chair, Supervisor Miller, there were several reasons. Uh, the directions I gave my, I gave Melinda and the library staff we're going to look at in, in looking at libraries when the possibility of closing libraries was raised uh, was uh, first of all to look at the utilization, but in addition to that to look at the uh, building and the quality of buildings and the problems that we had had with the buildings and to look at the proximity to other libraries and other factors that they thought were per pertinent. Uh, one of the issues with the Catalina Library is that a very large percentage of the utilization uh, is actually from the uh, Saddlebrook area and the other communities that are in Pinal County and do not pay uh, property, How do you know that? property tax. Do you have that broken out in the state count? Do you check their IDs? Uh, I'm going to let Melinda answer that if that's, if that's all right. Okay. Good. I, I'm real curious how you would know that just with people coming through the door, how, how you could define who was from Pinal and who was from Catalina. The other problem we have with that particular library is um, the building. The building is very small. The building has always been on the wrong side of the road and is actually a danger for kids to cross from the primary uh, uh, residential areas to cross the road to get there. We have looked, as we have for Dusenberry, for other sites for the, uh, the library there without success. Uh, not once, but several times. Uh, those were the fact, some of the factors. And the other factor, of course, is that the Oral Valley Library, uh, which I certainly agree is not uh, not uh, um, available for uh, for youth and or kids unless their parents can take them there. But it is a, a new facility, it's a large facility that is uh, within, I think, about five miles, four or five miles. That's that's library. quite a distance for to travel uh, from one of the, the most underserved communities in, in Pima County. Um, the other thing, you have $21 million in the uh, bond for libraries. What are you going to do with that money? If the bond, if those uh, libraries are built, uh, and I believe this is already was already pointed out to the bond committee and I believe to the board of supervisors, uh, then each of those libraries will require uh, a, an additional cent. For each new library that's built, we require an additional cent to a cent and a half of, of secondary property tax. So that's additional pressure on our secondary rate in addition that's, to the bonds. We're going to have additional costs for, I mean, these closures aren't going to be factored in as, as cuts in the rate. Madam Chair, Supervisor Miller, no, no, these closures would not result in cut in rates. Okay. They are to correct a deficit that is there and that has existed for some time. Um, you know, I just think it's wrong to uh, close a library in a community that uh, has the young children of these families up there that do not have the access that children in other communities do. And, uh, you know, closing this library is unconscionable, in my opinion, that we've targeted this library for the children of these families. And we've already gotten, I can tell you, uh, 14 calls on that particular library already since that memo has gone out. Now getting to Dusenberry River, um, the gate count there is higher than 19 of the other libraries. How do you justify that one? Uh, Madam Chair, Supervisor Miller, I, I spoke to that a minute ago in response to Supervisor Carroll. It's basically the quality of the building, problems that we've had consistently over time with the building, 
and the proximity to other libraries. I agree with you, certainly the gate count is high. The gate count, <coughs> however, is, is to a considerable extent materials that are simply uh, picked up and, uh, on, and, uh, and delivered back there. The use of computers in that library, while it's significant, is not, uh, does not nearly match the gate count there, um, And the um, proximity in that area of the library is the closest one is what, about four miles from I believe, there? I believe that, uh, that that's a that's correct. I guess I, I just wonder how you can, what the criteria were that you used to come up with these uh, libraries and, and the one, are you planning to build another library up there? Uh, Supervisor, <coughs> Madam Chair, Supervisor Miller, we had uh, uh, about two or three years ago when we expected that the recessionary, uh, that the assessed uh, value would bounce back faster, we had looked at relocating that library uh, partly because of the uh, uh, largely because of the problems that, that I had already have already talked about that we've had with the building, uh, also because of the space and the constriction in the space and not being able to expand it. We were not able to find any property that was likely to be affordable uh, in, in the... In the uh, so you're going to give up this library? No, I no longer have a library in the Foothills community, a public library. Other than the Manini Library. Well, that's not in the Foothills area. That's several miles away. So, okay. Madam Chair, Supervisor Miller, it is a very, very hard thing for me and for Mr. Cervantes and, and the library people to recommend closure of any library. The first job I had when I took this job was to expand library service. And I, uh, I take that very seriously. I was uh, in a very it hurts me personally somewhat that, that, uh, that we're at this point where I uh, you know, um, I, recommend this. I've gotten 62 calls on this closure of this library already. And how can people have faith? I mean, you're putting $21 million and you're telling me it's not going to go into that area in this bond election. If we're not going to start taking things away from people in these areas, I don't know how you expect them to support a bond election if you're not planning to uh, build another library in that area. Why are you projecting that you'll close this library? Uh, <clears throat> Madam Chair, Supervisor Miller, that will depend on the, uh, on the uh, decisions that the board makes about the recommended budget and the directions that we get from the uh, county administrator. And I would expect that we would, we, would not, we would begin closure if the board passes the budget as it's recommended or with that recommendation that we would begin to close the library on the first of the new fiscal year. Mm -hmm. And in those, that $21 million you're asking for libraries and the bond that just got approved this morning, what is that going to be used for? Uh, Madam Chair, Supervisor Miller, there are three new libraries that are included, and I'll take that back, there are two new libraries that are included in that, the original three. Uh, one of them is, is to build a permanent library in the Salinita community. We have there only the, uh, a portable building now, uh, totally inadequate and very, very small. Uh, and uh, uh, second one it would be in the Vale community on the far east side. Uh, it is, uh, there is no library in that area at this time. Uh, and the third one that had been uh, in the original proposal <coughs> and has been deleted now from the bond uh, proposal uh, was in the southwest area replacing a lease space, space leased from Tucson Unified School District um, in the uh, Valencia and Bop area, uh, Bop Road area, and that, uh, that's been deleted. That library is uh, terribly small. It also serves a area with a large number of, of uh, economically disadvantaged children. Okay, could I, when you do the analysis on this for the um, libraries, could I get a mapping of where these libraries are all located? Yes. Um, that would be helpful. And um, again, I want to voice my objection to the closure of these libraries, especially, I mean, both of them are extremely important in, in neighborhoods that really need that, that don't have anything close by. And, um, you know, for people to have faith in us and, and faith in the future of this community, and then you, you're proposing these bond increases and you're taking libraries out of, away from these folks that have been utilizing them for years. 
um, is just something that does not sit well with me, and I'm sure it won't sit well with my constituents when they go to vote on this bond and they ask the question, what's going to happen to our community? Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Huckleberry. Uh, yes, um, Madam Chair, members of the board, I think we're talking about these library closures as if it's a fait accompli. And I think what you have to understand is that the library director and Hank both talked to me about whether or not this is an option. And I said every option is on the table with regard to how we balance the library district budget and take it out of being in a structural deficit. And, and they chose uh, these specific uh, libraries for possible closure based on a, a series of facts and information that's easily available and easily understood. Um, and I think the, the, the important part here is to remember is that this is a discussion about how to increase efficiency, how to best deliver services, how to talk about that from a regional perspective, because that's what the library district is. It's a regional system. It's, it's, it serves some neighborhoods, yes, but its primary emphasis is in regional services. So I don't think that, and I think these discussions are good because these are the discussions that we need to hear uh, and, and the public has to provide that input in this budget development process. You aren't even going to get my recommended budget to the third. Mm -hmm. Whether or not this is in there or not remains to be seen. But I think it's a, it's a discussion worth having and the, the discussion emphasizes our continuing search for efficiencies and how we best deliver services. And that's an okay discussion to have, and this board may decide at the very end that we can establish the or resolve the deficit issue with regard to the, the structural deficit by raising the tax rate six cents. Uh, this savings of about one point five million dollars will let will get the fund balance back to a ten percent level. Now, you know, you could run that fund balance down to a five percent level uh, and not do anything. So there's some options you have, but it's incumbent upon me to tell you the risk that you take in exercising those options to lower the fund balance below what I would call, uh, you know, an acceptable level. You can you can do it for a year, but you better not do it long because, again, the next time we have a flood at the Great Library at Craig Croft and River, and it's closed for six weeks because we're replacing the book collection that we've done before. You know, we just loan for our fund balance reserve. Um, it's the, you, I heard you talk about something from a restaurant upstairs coming down. Don't they do this? Is their insurance cover when, they, when something like that happens, a leak or something like that? Madam Chair and Supervisor, yes, you know, we file claims. You know, when it happens four or five times, you know you got a problem. I think we just had one recently a week or so ago, two weeks ago, the dishwasher. So, I mean, and so that disrupts the operation of the library, requires closure, requires a whole lot of remediation to eliminate the issue of mold, and so it is a problematic location. The sooner we can find a replacement for that library, the better. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, we'll do as what the board directs us to do. We've looked at locations. Uh, there frankly haven't been any. When that shopping center came up for uh, sale, and I think there's a is there a, it's either a Walgreens or a CVS pharmacy in front of it. Well, Walgreens. Walgreens. It, we had thought that that would be an ideal location, have a standalone library where you wouldn't be hidden around the corner going upstairs subject to these floods. So we're hopeful that sooner or later, someday into the future, we'll find a standalone facility like that in the general area to provide the library services. In the meantime, we have to question the wisdom of continuing to invest in this facility, in this site, and under all the risks that we, go, uh, we, we have taken in, in operating it. But again, we could very well operate it another year, or all these, uh, these other four in another year, but what we're telling you is that we think we have an obligation to talk to you about cost effectiveness, and that's what we're doing. It's a whole different decision about what services to suspend or to continue. And that's what this board does. Thank you, Mr. Huckleberry. Supervisor Carroll. I wasn't finished yet. Madam Chair, I wasn't finished. Supervisor Carroll, then we'll go back to you, Supervisor Miller. Madam Chair, um, Mr. Huckleberry, um, if we haven't built a library in a long time, is that correct? 
We've had we've had a relatively stable number of libraries. We haven't built one or brought one on board in a long time, other than the Oro Valley Library that we took in Pima County. No, Madam Chair, Superintendent, no, we haven't. We built no libraries. I guess my question is, you know, in the last two years, it looks like we have 25% increase in the library rate. And what is driving that? We keep talking about efficiencies and, and smoother operations and being able to run these libraries more efficiently. What is driving the increase in that rate? Madam Chair, um, Supervising Elder, we have opened new libraries. We opened the Miranda Library, which is a brand new library. We opened the Sarita. In the last two years? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. but which one are you Post talking about? Wheeler Taft? Wheeler Taft, probably that's been 10. Yeah, that's been a Yeah, in five years. Yeah. But what other libraries have opened? Because Madam Chair, Supervising Elder, Floyd Wells was, was opened about eight years, seven years, six or seven years ago. Uh, Martha Cooper uh, was open. We put the uh, the uh, small library in Sabarita, the, the uh, you know, portable or uh, mobile facility library in Sabarita. Uh, I think, oh, and we, we <coughs> were scheduled to rebuild uh, and relocate uh, Wilmot Murphy but we uh, wound up uh, saving a considerable amount of bond money by, um, by revamping that building and, re and, uh, not, and expanding it rather than rebuilding it. Is that, so that's... Uh, that's all happened in but the that's last been, eight to ten years. Yeah, eight to ten years, but the 25% increase is over the past two years, and we keep talking about operating more efficiently and streamlining things, and I guess... 25, give me a number, a real number. 25% sounds like a lot, but what is that in dollars? Oh, it's... Uh, Six cents this year, and I don't have the dollar amount last year. I believe it from 12, 13 to 13, 14 was, I don't remember what the increase was, but I guess end of the day, I, I still want to know what is driving that Madam Chair, in the last two years. Mr. Huckleberry. The, the numbers I have is that the library budget expenditures in 2012, 13, two years ago, was $34 million. And in 14, 15, that's the year we're in is $37 million. That's 10%. We're looking at the rate, I guess is what I was looking oh, at. Yeah, the rate. Yeah, that's so the absolute, assessed yeah. valuation. If, if you, no, no, it's, it's driven by the fact that we're correcting the structural deficit over time. If you recall, we said starting two years ago, we'd have to increase the rate to eliminate the structural deficit. We have fund balance in the library system. Probably three years ago, that was $14 million. Uh, and so we've been we rather than keep that rate artificially high, we dropped it, and then we've been we spent down the fund balance, and then we've been we've been ramping it back up to get to structural balance. So that's that's it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, oh, excuse me. I was just going to add that in in the initial years, I think what uh, five or six years after we took it over from the city. We received payments from the city, starting with $8 million in the first year and dropping down to $2 million a year. Uh, so we did have that cushion. That was the main library? No, that was, no, that that was, was the system. The it's a corporate system. Okay. That's what I was going to say okay. is that, you know, there was this whole agreement to change over the system. And in that, there was a decreasing payment that took place that Mr. Atha just described. And then there was also the fact that we had to more than double the library tax at the time in order to get the system back on its feet because it had been severely underfunded and underpaid for by the city when they operated their half of the system, so to speak. So it was a major league problem that this board had the courage to undertake and make sure that we had a library system that treated everybody fairly. And I'm, I'm personally very glad to hear Supervisor Miller speak so passionately about libraries in low-income areas because uh, certainly that's the situation in District 5 in every single one of our libraries. So I, I'm going to remember this conversation and we're going to talk about it some more later on when it comes down to approving the library budget. All right. Uh, if there are no more questions, Mr. Atha, we're going to take about a 10-minute break. We'll return at 3.10. And at that point, community and economic and community.